Good morning, and welcome to High Street Baptist Church here in Tring. My name's Ken Poulter, and I'm a member here, and from time to time, bring a message from God's Word to the church on a Sunday morning. But what's in a name? A name can sometimes tell us quite a lot about a person. They may have a title. They may be called Doctor, Professor, The Reverend, Lord, Baron. And all these names uh, conjure up for us uh, and and let us think about uh, some character of the person, something uh, that that we can uh, know about them. There's a trend in uh, uh, celebrity culture to name your child after the place they were conceived. Why you'd want to do that, I've got no ideas, but I think uh, uh, that uh, is an increasing trend. But for the more more common names, you can turn to books and look look in them and you'll find the meaning of the most common names. I've got a pair of socks. Uh, A new pair, I'm glad to say. Um, A very... uh, valuable to me. They were given to me by a friend. Around the ankle they say Ken, and on the bottom they say popular and kind. And I leave you to consider uh, whether these socks actually are reliable commentary on my character. I introduced this topic of names and their possible meanings because today we start a new series of sermons under the title the names of God in the Old Testament. These are names which were given to God by some of the uh, prophets, by some of the people we read about in in the Old Testament, and they reflect something of the character and nature of God that that person perhaps has experienced in a very special way at that time or at that place. And I've been asked to start this series by speaking about What may be the best known of these names? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now, a number of the names that we'll be looking at in the coming weeks, I think it's a six week series, start with the uh, name Jehovah and then have uh, another word, another descriptive word following it. I thought I'd better just start by Uh, reminding you or telling you that Jehovah is the Latin translation for the name Yahweh. Uh, And Yahweh itself indeed is an attempt by some of the early translators of the Bible to add some vowels to the letters Y-H-W-H that Jewish priests uh, and scribes used to use when uh, they wanted to write the sacred name of God And from about the second century BC onwards, it was a name they didn't speak. Uh, And so when they came to uh, translate the Bible first into Latin, then into English, they added uh, some appropriate vowels, uh, and we call that name Yahweh in Latin, Jehovah. Now the name Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, it is actually found in the authorised version of the Bible in uh, Genesis 22 and verse 14 of today's reading. And it's translated in, in our church Bibles in the NIV as the Lord will provide. The reading today gave us the uh, picture, gave us the story, the incident in, in which this name Uh, was given to God or uh, given to God uh, used by Abraham now I don't want to talk about the details of the story or speculate really what was in the mind of God or Abraham when he was asked by God to go with his son to Mount Moriah and there to offer Isaac as a sacrifice Enough to say, perhaps, that we read that God was testing Abraham's faith and that Abraham was prepared to obey. But even when first asked by God to do this, believed that in some way God would spare uh, his son 
uh, Isaac, even if that meant that he would be uh, brought back from the dead. But the importance of this story for us, really, is that at the last minute, uh, as Abraham was about to make this sacrifice, God's angel called out to him and told him not to sacrifice Abra Isaac. And when Abraham looked up, there in a bush, he saw a ram caught by his horns. And instead of his son, he sacrificed this ram. When he completed the sacrifice, an angel appeared uh, or spoke to, to uh, Abraham and uh, revealed more about God's covenant between him and Abraham. Because this story of Abraham and Isaac is not just a part of the history of the beginning of the Jewish people, but it's part of God revealing his greater purpose that he had for Abraham and his descendants. Because after sacrificing the ram, God spoke to Abraham again and said that because of his trust in God, that through him, the whole world would be blessed. As we read in Genesis 22, uh, towards the end of our reading, verses 15 to 19. And we can see, uh, looking at the course of history, of course, the history of the Jewish people uh, and the events that occurred um, between the time of Abraham and the time of Christ, that that blessing came uh, to the world through the sacrifice of another lamb, another lamb. As John the Baptist said, when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized by him, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it was, of course, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, that was to die on the cross at Calvary. And as the writer of the Hebrews explains in Hebrews chapter 9, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. How do we benefit from this provision that God has made for us through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross? Well, that well-known verse, John 3, 16, tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's through our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died on Calvary for us, who's taken away our sins, that our relationship with God can be restored uh, and that we will uh, rise with him uh, in the last times. On Mount Moriah, God provided a ram as a sin offering in place of Isaac. On Calvary, God provided his son to bear our sins and to restore our relationship with him. Now that's the big picture of God providing, the Lord providing. He's provided a saviour, the saviour of the world. But the wonderful thing about uh, our God is he's not only concerned with the big picture of the world, but he's concerned with the needs of you and I on a day-to-day -day basis. God sees and responds to our daily needs. These may be needs for food, it may be needs for money to pay bills, it may be something as simple as need to uh, start the car when it won't start on a cold winter's morning. It might be help to uh, rescue us from some rather dangerous situation or medical help when we need it or we need it for a loved one. In his way, God supplies 
and meet these needs. You notice I say needs, not wants. God uh, doesn't necessarily take our um, more ambitious desires and sees those as our needs, but God sees the very basic things that we need. As Jesus said when he was speaking to uh, the people who had gathered on, uh, on uh, the hillside in what we call the Sermon on the Mount, he said to them, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the world runs after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. What I just must say is that God rarely supplies all our needs in a way which is similar to um, going on the internet, looking at the Amazon site, finding the thing we want, uh, pressing the buttons, paying with our card, and uh, within uh, a day or two, uh, something will arrive just as we want. God doesn't always provide in that sort of way. Sometimes he does, and many Christians will be able to testify to do some really miraculous way in which God has provided for them. But sometimes uh, God supplies our needs, uh, which we involve some effort on our part. We need to make some moves and, uh, and uh, some plans on our part. We need perhaps to take an initiative led by God, guided by God. Sometimes we think he's forgotten us and we get impatient and we try to go about getting something our own way. And when we do that, we often mess it up. Or we make very silly life choices and it takes time for us to come back to God and tune in to him again and to hear what he's saying to us. But remember what Jesus said there on the hillside to those who had gathered to hear him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be given to you as well. As we seek to live as good citizens in the kingdom of God, as we seek to follow the examples that Jesus set us for, for Christian living. Let's not worry about where our needs are going to be met tomorrow. Let's remember that God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Let's not worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own, which is surely true at this time if at no other, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you that you see us, you see our needs, and in your way and in your time you meet those needs. Lord, give us faith. Give us belief to know that you are indeed our provider. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have also provided for us a saviour, your son, Jesus Christ. And we give you praise and worship for all that you do for us, day by day, now and to eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.